In the 60s, I went to architecture school west of the Sierras, out in Berkeley. Before electronic media shrunk the world, we could actually feel the distance of being out there on the other side of those mountains. So when um, outside lecturers, these five luminaries, journeyed out there to talk to us, we leaned forward, we really listened to them. I'm going to show you how these five voices are present in my work to this day. The great Louis Kahn himself walked into our studio one day. Somebody asked him, how do you begin a design? And Kahn, in his poetic way, simply said, draw a square. He explained that a square is a pure and perfect thing and that it will show you why the complications of your project can't result in a square. This is one of Kahn's um, conceptual sketches where he's in the process of evolving a plan. It's sort of like a musical score. And so, to this day in my own work, all these many years later after that encounter in that studio, I still start every design by first drawing a square. Still. I think I like the stillness of the approach, actually. Charles Moore came out from Yale. We were all crazy about him. He was like a worldly grown-up child. Uh, and his architecture awakened people to the simple pleasures of being alive. Y'all know Charles from Austin, no doubt. This is a one-room house, a diagrammatic drawing of a one-room house that Charles did. And like so many of his designs, it's village-like, toy-like. Or to use Charles' words, it cheered up routine. And so again, to this day in my own work, I look for some simple pleasure meaningful to each project and then try to bring that into focus to sort of uh, clear away all the noise. When Richard Neutra showed up, we were really surprised because we all thought he was dead. <laughs> But he had, he had this youthful, forward-thinking mind. In fact, the first time I ever heard the word ecology, it was from the lips of Richard Moitra. This is a sketch he did for an elementary school in the 1930s. He spoke to us passionately about an architecture whose starting point and finish line is nature. And he told us why that's so important to the well-being of humankind. Again, to this day in my own work, though you can't really see it, um, I guess my buildings try, more or less, to unfold to nature instead of um, just looking out at nature as though viewing it on TV with a mute button on. Carlos Scarpa arrived from Venice, and although he, he lectured entirely in Italian, he nevertheless conveyed an unforgettable sensitivity to materials, to the way materials go together, and to the charisma that craftsmanship can bring to a building. This is one of Scarpa's conceptual sketches evolving uh, details, but he talked like this, you know, he talked, he, it was it, with great enthusiasm. <laughs> he was intense. And so again, today in my, uh, to this day in my own work, um, at least somewhere in each project, we try to find some material to connect with some admirable craftsmanship to please the eye, but also to please the mind and the heart. The great British architect James Sterling told us that the architect's fee and the project schedule 
is never sufficient to allow you the time that you need to dream for architecture. In other words, you have to pre-dream before you even get the job. This is one of his travel sketches. He suggested that you collect observations ahead of time, collect concepts, groom them, save them, so that later on when the right race comes along, you'll have the right racehorse to trot out. And so here's a dream from one of my sketchbooks. This was unattached to any particular project. It's a skylight well with a big mirror at the bottom of it, angled so as to convey views of sky into a room, which might not otherwise have a decent view out of it. So putting all five of these voices together in the same project, we're doing a cemetery right now for a thousand ash urns. Each urn will be placed in a masonry niche and sealed with a marble plaque. When visitors enter this cemetery, they'll notice that some of the niches appear to have been left open. Uh, and when they look in those niches, they will see views of sky and passing clouds. Sort of hard to see here in this model. But of course, this is a descendant of that sketchbook that I just showed you from years before. So, Louis Kahn's Square, Charles Moore's Delight, Neutra's nature, Scarpa's craft, Sterling's dream. These great things I got to learn west of the Sierras. Thanks. Thank you all.